thank you for the invitation to be here today with you. Uh, the topic of my conversation with you will be on oral care for patients with epidermolysis bullosa. And uh, the first thing we're going to talk about basically are concepts because when you talk about any type of preventive care, it's the concepts that count first. And one of the things to begin with is that it all starts in the beginning. And as you know, all types of health care starts not only at birth, but starts prenatally. And there's a lot that we can do with parents and prepare them for children in general for oral health. And who am I particularly? Well, I'm a professor at the Feinberg School of Medicine at Northwestern University. And I'm attending at Lori Children's Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. And a diplomate in the American Board of Pediatric Dentistry, also a fellow of the Academy of Dental Material. And I have a private practice. In my private practice, the emphasis is on patients with special needs, all special needs. So I have a very large population of patients who require special needs. And I have been in research since the early 70s. And um, I've done a lot of research projects, and I am continually in research. In fact, I'm the director of our uh, residence research program at Children's Hospital in pediatric dentistry. So when we start talking about concepts, we have to talk about protocols, and protocols standardize care. They minimize mistakes, and they increase efficiency. But they also educate. And I get phone calls all the time from other institutions asking, how do we handle the dental care for our special needs patients. And that's why you have protocols. You can educate the practitioner, you can educate the staff, you can educate the patients and the parents. It's very common for us to be educating a, a, a patient, my staff, and have the parent learn a lot. And we need to know these really wonderful things to take care of our children. And things have changed a lot, and that's why it's important to understand concepts. Things have changed a lot. We have to re-educate everyone, especially when it comes to things like epidermolysis bullosa, because I get some pretty interesting phone calls from other institutions asking what to do. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that pain was handled by cocaine toothache drops. True advertisement, and it was for sale by all druggets. Now, in Chicagoland, we would refer to those guys as being pushers. And when they talk about the price being 15 cents, I don't think it's the same as three nickel bags. I could be wrong. <laughs> so things continued to change. After all, diet, nutrition. It wasn't too long ago they had this Blatt's beer commercial. A case of Blatt's beer in your home means much to the young mother. And obviously, baby participates in its benefits. Of course, beer's good for children. Everyone knows that. And if that's not good enough, you can always start them on Coca-Cola when they're very young. And if you can't read this ad, you have to see it refers to laboratory tests. Over the last few years, proves that kids who drink Coca-Cola are better adapted and blend in better with other children. So it's very important because it provides necessary essential sugars. So, yeah, things have changed a lot. If that's not too bad, just ask one of these physicians here about which cigarette they prefer. I'm sure they're camels, because that's what they used to advertise. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarettes. Well, things have changed a lot, and they certainly have in oral health care. We do try to manage patients by using what's called CAMBRA, which is carries management by risk assessment. Each individual is an individual. Every person is treated differently. And we have wonderful testing we can do now, all sorts of salivary testing we can do, all sorts of radiographic new equipment we can use, uh, comb beam CTs, we get these three-dimensional x-rays, wonderful things to show us what we can do with our patients. One of my favorite is the carry screen. It's, I can give a lecture to 1,000 dentists, and four in the audience will have a carry screen machine. And it's a wonderful device that measures by bioluminescence how much ATP is in the plaque. And that determines how pathogenic the bacteria is. It actually works. Unbelievably, when you culture everything out, it's 100% accurate. Pathogenicity can be determined how bad the bacteria is. You can do it in about 60 seconds on a patient, orally. 
So there's other things, Livacek mutans, which uses an antibody antigen specific specificity test using a little strip uh, that, that conjugates the antibody to the antigen that's on the strip, so you can absolutely find if there is any type of streptococcus mutans. Strep mutans is a marker for dental pathogenicity. It's the one we always used to talk about producing decay, but we now know that's not particularly so true. You know, just about, oh, I don't know, about six, seven years ago, I started lecturing a lot on biofilms and probiotics. I usually lecture a lot on probiotics. And we thought we had 300 main species in the oral biofilm. We now there's over 20,000. We have 1,000 of them actually identified. And I was talking to a nutritionist earlier about how we know how gluten metabolism is done in the mouth by the bacteria in the mouth. It's, that's why we have gluten sensitivity now, uh, because we lack those bacteria. But we have all sorts of ways we can test for this. Carey's risk test is the old test where we actually take samples out and grow them and look for things like mutant streptococci, which is a group of bacteria, and lactobacilli, which is a genus. Um, if you hear lactobacilli, you have to realize that the vast majority of lactobacilli, there's probably about 1,000 species of lactobacilli, maybe about 20,000 strains, that the vast majority are beneficial. So testing for something that's very beneficial is crazy. Diagnodent is particularly useful, though, in epidermolysis bullosa because it doesn't take x-rays. It's a simple little laser device that passes a laser beam through the tooth. Carious dentin absorbs part of that beam and the reflectance you get back can tell you if there's decay in there. So for the patient who's difficult to get radiographs on, a dentist should have a diagnodent machine. I love it. The best thing with diagnodent is if you can go in and you pick a small lesion, you can actually watch it and determine if you're doing remineralization of it. So it gives you extremely conservative therapy where you can actually watch over a period of time and see, do I really need to do anything with this tooth? That does, does it really have to be restored? Preventive care starts at age one for most kids. That's the first visit is age one. We just don't want our kids looking like Jaws here from Moonraker and The Spy Who Loved Me, two James Bond movies. This guy was actually very popular in those movies. Um, but there's things we can do starting at age one, and these are just for all kids in general, we can use probiotic drops. There's a wonderful series from BioGaia of probiotic drops. There are oral probiotic drops that produce an oral biofilm that's natural and healthy. MI paste is a high calcium phosphate paste, very useful in preventing decay. And we'll, we'll talk a lot about MI paste and, of course, xylitol. And xylitol is a naturally occurring carbohydrate. It's a five-carbon polyol. It, it's present in many things, from corn to grapes to most fruits. It is highly present erythritol and xylitol in red wine. And there's no proof to this. But some people believe it's the xylitol and the erythritol that are the active ingredients that make red wine beneficial why if you have a glass of red wine every day, because both xylitol and erythritol are strong anti-inflammatories. And there's really no excuse for this. This is a child. Uh, I did not do that. I would never do that. I haven't done anything like that ever. Since I was trained in the early 70s, we have never done a steel cap on a front tooth. And I see that, though. I think it's barbaric to do that. I would never do that to my own child. Why would it do it to someone else? And forgive me, I will show you pictures of my kids. I have five kids, so I'm a proud papa. Prenatal care. I, I go to Lamaze classes. I talk to parents before the child is born because you may not realize this, but 83% of the bacteria that come to the child comes from the mom. And if you develop a healthy biofilm in the mother, that is passed on to the child. And it's very important, and that's why we discuss probiotics with parents. Uh, there's a lot of very good probiotics for uh, women, and Claire Labs has a great series of probiotics for it. And, of course, xylitol. And when we talk about xylitol, xylitol comes in many different forms, a lot of really delicious candies. It has a very low glycemic index. It's safe for diabetics. It does not produce decay. It actually inhibits decay and periodontal disease. 
It's a strong anti-inflammatory. It's actually very good for you in general xylitol. Special needs patients definitely need xylitol. They always have very high develop, highly developed plaque that is very pathogenistic. And don't underestimate the oral plaque. It's involved in a lot of systemic diseases, as you've heard, I'm sure, a lot in the news about that, especially recently. I think that a few months ago when it came out that it was an oral pathogen, a uh, periodontal uh, microorganism, that was involved with the conversion of benign polyps to uh, malignant polyps in colorectal cancer, I think that opened a lot of eyes because that's where the oral pathogens come in. But xylitol comes as toothpaste, it comes as mouth sprays. So if you have a patient where it's difficult to brush for any reason, whether it be epidermolysis bullosa or if it's behavior, autism, uh, they have a hard time with coordination due to cerebral palsy, uh, these sprays are wonderful. You can spray five times a day, have a great result in reducing amount of plaque. They feel so much more comfortable. It neutralizes the acids. It lubricates the mouth. So you have many chewables. Periobiotic toothpaste. It's a special toothpaste. How many people have heard of periobiotic toothpaste? Just raise your hands. Isn't that? That's crazy. It is a high xylitol toothpaste, so it works by xylitol. It includes in it a probiotic, lactobacilli paracaceae. The lactobacilli paracaceae is one of those famous bacteria that works even when pasteurized. So it's a dead bacteria, but it still is extremely beneficial because it aggregates, it clumps up the pathogens. It's called periobiotic. It also has stevia leaf, stevia leaf extract in it and pure spearmint, all of which have been shown to be beneficial for periodontal disease. And one of my colleagues just finished a very good study with it. So am I paste if there's any enamel defects? You know there's more enamel defects in epidermolysis bullosa. Oral health probiotics, there's a ton. Now when people say, oh, there's no research done on probiotics, ah, uh, guess what? About 1,400 articles were published in peer-reviewed journals last year on probiotics. There's tons of research on probiotics. Uh, I don't have time to talk about all these different probiotics. There's a lot of great ones. Uh, this Bliss K12 is a Streptococcus salivarius that was actually discovered by Stan Schulman at Children's Hospital about 12 years ago, 15 years ago. And it is the most potent way of preventing strep throat in kids. It's a very strong inhibitor of Streptococcus pyogenes, which produces strep throat. It also has been shown to be useful in ch kids with Panda syndrome. So, yes? Sorry, which one was it that produces strep? Strep salivarius, it's the Bliss K12. I've had a lot of families who go on Bliss K12 and they end up never needing another antibiotic for strep throat and the family's crazy. Are there good studies on this? No, no one's gonna finance a lot of these good studies, unfortunately. Oh, I mentioned gluten metabolizers. That's actually something that we're doing a lot at Children's Hospital. Uh, we've, uh, Harvard got started with this a few years ago, Foresight Center. They started looking for gluten metabolizers. They're bacteria that break down the gluten for you. Uh, I discussed earlier with someone that he, mammals don't break down gluten. Bacteria break down the gluten for you. And some of the key gluten metabolizers are all in the mouth, the whole Rothia series, some very famous bacteria, Rothia area that was discovered on the Russian space station. That's why it's named Rothia area. Um, the Rothia denticariosa is a bacteria that grows in all your grooves of all your teeth, the pits and grooves. As you chew your food, it breaks down the gluten for you. It breaks down about a third of the gluten before it even hits the stomach. It has a very high acid tolerance. It survives a very highly acidic environment very well. Unless, unless you use certain oral products that actually inhibit the growth of urothia. So it could very well be, at least in the lab, that a lot of the issues we find with gluten has been a result of human intervention. Now, when you talk about oral and gut bacteria, they've been, if you look in the research literature, you find involvement in autism, of course, diabetes type 2, rheumatoid arthritis, depression and anxiety, Tons of research on depression and anxiety with a result of oral bacteria. Obesity, a tremendous amount of research on obesity. Uh, of course, dental disease, periodontal disease, cardiac disease, reactive lung disease now. 
They have this new long gut axis theory showing the relationship between a lot of oral bacteria that get into the lungs, causing them to be highly reactive during exercise, causing asthmatic episodes, all autoimmune disorders to a certain degree, aging, of course, gluten sensitivity, and celiac disease. So all this is kind of a duh, because we've always kind of known that instinctively. Oh, pictures of family. Okay, here's my five kids. This is when my middle son was commissioned, Ashley. He was read, he read the oath of office by my oldest son, who was at the time uh, becoming a captain. Uh, all five of my kids there. There's some contact information. In case I hurry through the end, you can write this down. I'm Mark Cannon at northwestern.edu. If you want more information, uh, real quickly here, oldest son, when he was in uh, Korea, that's what he's with his ROK troops, and oldest son in Afghanistan with his master sergeant before taking a little tourist trip, I'm sure. As you can see, they're armed with their tourist gear. <laughs> Middle son at his wedding, officer's wedding with my daughter-in-law. Middle son, he got commissioned as a pilot. And oldest daughter at her wedding. Oh, those family pictures. I'm sorry. I'm proud of my kids. <laughs> Oral care for patients with epidermolysis bullosa. There are specific treatment methods for management of the mucosa. First of all, prevention, you know, using an extra soft toothbrush or very special toothbrushes made, a glove lubrication to reduce tissue trauma, xylitol mouth rinses and sprays, caraphate suspension, and cushioning of our materials that we use. Prevention, number one thing. Because unfortunately, a lot of times, kids look like this. You know, severe caries, and they need to have a general anesthetic, which we'll talk about, for restorative care. And that's just a lot of extra risk to put the child through in procedures that's preventable. PHB, nice little company out of Wisconsin, produces these toothbrushes. They're designed for kids who have special needs ultra soft bristles, they won't cause a problem. The handles are designed to not cause a problem. I think you can appreciate the design, the two different designs they have. Ease of holding it too, it's much easier to hold for a caregiver or for the child. So if you haven't had these toothbrushes recommended to you, I'm sorry, but those are the ones that are very good for epidermolysis bullosa, are the whole series of PHB ones. Very nice family-owned company out of Wisconsin. Flossing can be done. I've been told a lot of times it can't be can with grippets. It's easy to hold the floss with a grippet. And you don't saw back and forth. You just go in between the teeth. There is a special floss that's made. That's a xylitol floss. Very beneficial for everybody. It'd be beneficial for everybody in the whole room. Sweeteners, again, these like sweeteners like uh, xylitol, and now we have erythritol we're doing a lot of research with. They're naturally found, like I mentioned, birch trees, plums, berries. Uh, you can use it as a spray, like the xylitots mouth spray, or you can use them with lollies. We use a lot of these lollies. They're uh, non-cariogenic. They actually prevent decay, uh, sugar substitute, and it is natural. You can bake with it. It tastes normal. Have you guys ever had xylitol, anything xylitol? It tastes perfectly normal. It tastes just like regular sugar. And they can also, they make them into just varnishes. We have xylitol varnishes. Uh, there's also lollipops that have a Chinese licorice root in it. And those actually inhibit all the bad bacteria also. And then naturally occurring products. MI paste is really important. That's a high calcium phosphate paste. And you just can't put calcium on a tooth. It will not be absorbed. Uh, it needs to have a carrier. And it uses casein phosphopeptide, which is a pre-protein, highly found in milk, uh, especially in human milk. And it, it's interesting. The human milk uh, is slightly different from bovine milk. I don't know if you realize that there are some definite differences in human milk. Now, the one big advantage is it, it's, it's safest accidentally swallowed. There's no, you could take a, a tube and give it to a baby. It will have no side effects whatsoever, unlike fluoride. 
So fluoride can be dangerous if ingested. So you don't want to do that. You want to use a non-fluoride product on the young kids. So like on a one-year-old, you could definitely be using MI paste very safely. And of course, as has been already mentioned, there's a lot more enamel defects in kids with epidermolysis bullosa. And those enamel defects are prone to decay very rapidly without intervention. Now, there are places that recommend fluoride or chlorhexidine mouth rinses. Uh, they have to be old enough to spit and not swallow rinse. It should not contain any alcohol, obviously. I prefer prevention mouth rinse. It's a small company again. Uh, I believe they're out of Missouri. Uh, it's, a it's a stabilized hydrogen peroxide that's been stabilized and buffered and has a little zinc added to it. So it works on the zinc motif. And it's very safe. And they make an oncology rinse too, which is really good for sores. It's called prevention oncology. Am I going too fast? Well, we talked a little bit about probiotics being live microorganisms, which is an old definition. This definition from 12 years ago is not current at all. Which, when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit on the host. And people think about probiotics as activia. That's a horrible mistake to make. I don't know if you know this, but Danon was even sued because they were successfully sued because they are pasteurizing their yogurt after it was manufactured, so it killed all the bacteria. Yeah, it's, kefir is much better. And kefir, if you guys can get kefir, kefir is very soothing to the mouth, very easily digested, contains a large number of very beneficial bacteria, especially lactobacilli ruteri, which is a granddaddy of them all for benefit. It also had lactobacilli, casei, paracasei, a number of good bacteria, but kefir goes back thousands of years. And there's actually articles that have been published, good scientific articles in, in top scientific journals, uh, showing that there's a anxiety depression benefit from drinking kefir. So, so basically, I love bacteria. Bacteria are good for you. You need to have bacteria. They're supposed to be around you. You're supposed to have your friends with you at all times. So basically, here's my definition. A pathogen is bacteria in the wrong place at the wrong time, and a probiotic is bacteria in the right place at the right time. Because you can take a gut bacteria that's normal for the gut and it's very beneficial and put it in the lung and you have disease. So it's just in the wrong place. Now, some other probiotic supplements. One is Yakult. Yakult has been famous since the 1930s. It has, been a, a, it has been attributed that Yakult has saved millions of babies' lives in the Far East. And it's a special string of lactobacilli casea Shiroda is in there, named after Dr. Shiroda, who discovered it back in, I think, 1935. It was very, use, very much so used in the um, uh, Far East before World War II. And it's very common now in the United States to find Yakult. And it goes back to what the nutritionist is saying beforehand, that every time you eat or drink, you are either feeding disease or fighting it. It's absolutely true. And a lot of things you do, many medications you take, any change you have to the environment changes the type of biofilm you have automatically. I don't care if it's an inhaler, you change your biofilms. If you use um, Listerine, you change your oral biofilm. And some of these changes are not beneficial. That's what people don't realize. It's a dual-edged sword. So you have to work with your probiotics to prevent the pathogens. You compete with the pathogens by displacing them. It regulates the duct microbial ecosystems, improves gut functions, nutritional uptake, and modulates immune responses. And that's what's so important is the modulation of immune response. And if you use the right probiotic, you actually colonize which is what you want to do. You want to have the right one in the right place at the right time because you're not going to colonize. Otherwise, if you constantly use a, if you use a probiotic that's a gut probiotic and try to colonize the mouth, it's not going to stay there. You have to take it every day for the rest of your life. Now, ulcers, and this is to me very interesting, oral ulcers have been treated a lot overseas with lactobacillus brevis CD2. And I did bring some in from Italy 
for use at, uh, at our hospital, at Children's Hospital of Chicago. There's been a number of studies done with the use of lactobacillus brevis CD2 with all sorts of ulcers, post-radiation, post-chemotherapy, any type of oral ulcer. It helps with rapid healing. It prevents the bacteria in the mouth from creating an issue. We do the same thing after we treat patients periodontally. We put them on prolaxin. And prolaxin is a probiotic series that prevent the periodontal pathogen, prevents them from coming back. Once you eradicate them, you don't want them to come back. So we use prolaxin. And here's another article on mucositis in patients that had neck cancer. In cleaning a child's teeth who has epidermolysis bullosa, we have several things we use. Number one, we use what's called the Butler prophylaxis cup. That is a self-abrasive medical silicone cup. The abrasive is built inside of it, so you have no abrasive in the mouth. It's like when you have your teeth clean and afterwards you have all that grit floating around. That's not a good thing. Not for a patient with epidermolysis bullosa. So we really tell people, never use that. Always use the non-abrasive Butler cup. I like to use an electric battery-powered polishing cup system because there's no hoses draping over the patient. You never know when you have a dental hose might do something just by rubbing back and forth. So we use a portable unit. And we always use caraphate suspension. So here's a patient, and her lips have been covered with caraphate and caraphate suspension prevent the blistering. And as part of our protocol, we have the non-abrasive cup being used, and I'm actually dipping it in caraphate suspension so I can properly clean her teeth, and she will not have any blisters. And that's why so often I'll see a patient who's been seen elsewhere, they come in, we follow the protocol, and they say afterwards, I didn't have any issues. We were not supposed to. Here's just one, the caraphate suspensions we have in the office. We just keep it there on hand. It stabilizes the mucosal membrane. So we can just dip the cup in that to do our polishing. Sucrophate is a sucrose sulfate aluminum complex. It binds the mucosa, prevent, it creates a physical barrier, but it also increases prostaglandin E2, epidermal growth factor, so it helps with the healing. And I'm not quite sure, there's no big studies on this. If someone asks me, has there been a study done with 50 patients with EB with or without caraphate? No. I mean, I don't, caraphate's not going to, that company's not going to sponsor it. There just hasn't been any studies. Does it work? In my hands, it does. It works for me very well. We use a varnish that's carefully applied only in the teeth. Would like to use an MI varnish. It's something I actually helped develop at my office for the clinicals. Uh, like I said, I've been involved in research a lot. It is a xylitol, it has xylitol in it, it has uh, high calcium phosphate varnish and fluoride. Now fluoride works differently from high calcium phosphate. Fluoride prevents the beginnings of decay, protects the outside layer, nothing on the inside. But calcium phosphate, like amorphous calcium phosphates, remineralize from the inside out. And in fact, I have a paper coming out next month on a new type of sealant that utilizes both uh, amorphous calcium uh, phosphate and fluoride, I mean, how they work differently. And here we are applying, and it's a good tasting varnish to the teeth to remineralize the teeth and prevent decay. Helps the enamel become acid resistant. Sealants, we use uh, a sealant that's a therapeutic sealant. Therapeutic sealants actually remineralize, oh, five minutes, oh, great, I'll hurry. Uh, it doesn't require a perfectly dry environment. It, is a very good way of remineralization. And we also use foam cushions for our radiograph. So I'll go through this really quickly. Uh, X-rays taking, no matter what type of sensor being used, digital sensor, there are foam cushions made for it. And we place the foam cushions on so you don't get any blisters from that. And we soak the foam in caraphate. So we can take all the X-rays we want without an issue. Remineralization sealants, instead of doing a lot of restorative care, this is actually a patient of mine with acute lymphocytic leukemia, uh, referred to me because someone tried to do some fillings on her and she had a very bad experience. When I diagnosed it, it was perfectly remineralizable, so we remineralize them with a special type of sealant that recoats, rehardens the enamel and the dentin. You know, it's very atraumatic. And again, when you remineralize, you're trying to build the whole thing up. Calcium, phosphate, you need all of it to rebuild. Now here's just some pictures from one of my um, 
retrieval studies where we retrieved uh, literally hundreds of teeth that had been uh, remineralized and just to tell you that there's been publications on it we have published this in peer-reviewed journals and so on here's some of the data so I'll go through that real quick you can reverse decay okay so we do all the time uh, we have a new sealant I developed uh, it's a new proprietary resin that is goes on hydrophilic once we cure it becomes hydrophobic so it, it, it's easy to place but then becomes very resistant to wear it also I named it happy seal Happy Seal stands for hydrophilic adhesion promoted polymerizing with high cross linking multifunctional inhibition of plaque adhesion. So it's better known as Happy Seal. <laughs> Logo for Happy Seal. Uh, we always do everything with a rubber sheet that's been lubricated. This is a special type of non latex rubber sheet that actually holds the KY gel in place so that we, we can coat it with KY gel and then place it on, and there's absolutely no trauma to the tissue this way. So you can do all sorts of care. We like to use KY gel uh, because it contains chlorhexidine, which is both antimicrobial and it's a collagenase inhibitor. We've, we've been studying chlorhexidine for, honest to God, 15, 20 years on how it works as an MMP inhibitor. It, it prevents the breakdown of collagen. So it makes sense if you want to preserve collagen, you use a collagen inhibitor, a collagenase inhibitor to preserve the collagen. This may, no studies on it, may prevent formation of bola. And so here we are. If you look at my gloves, you see my gloves have been lubricated. If you look very carefully, you'll see that. I'm sorry I touched the screen. I did that. Uh, my gloves are lubricated. My assistant's gloves are actually resting on my gloves, and I have my one finger resting on a tooth. So there's no trauma done to the patient. Let me, let me get rid of this. There we go. And if you look at the back of this one, this is just a generic one. You see it has chlorhexidine in it and neutral pH. Orthodontic, absolutely. You can do orthodontics. We use a material called alginate. It does not stick to the tissue. You can actually add to it. So we build up a little bit. We keep adding to it. And we take little multiple little molds of the teeth so we can make appliances. The appliances we like to make are not irritating. And by the way, that's a custom made tray that holds the material. And it's foam lined and it has carafate on the outside so we won't cause any irritation. And here's an expander made for one of my EB patients who her front tooth is sticking way out. It's all tissue borne. There's no rough spots. I'm going, I'm going. And so here she is at the beginning of bringing this tooth back. And here she is with the tooth brought back and the space widened out. So we do this all the time orthodontically. We do a lot of stuff with using clear correct. I prefer ClearCorrect and Invisalign because ClearCorrect is smoother and we can line up the teeth perfectly fine. If you heard about Invisalign, uh, ClearCorrect is like Invisalign. There's no brackets, no wires, nothing to pinch or anything else like that. So we do a lot of that. Also we can line it with uh, MI paste. We do treatment with nitri nitrous oxide analgesia. We just lubricate the nasal hood and carefully place it. Uh, we do a lot of stuff with single tooth anesthesia, which is a computerized anesthesia system which numbs only the tooth. And you don't get blisters from this. And I always, patients always tell me how much better it is because it's very, very accurate. It numbs just each individual tooth. We can do one here, we can do one here, no blistering. The lips and cheeks are not numb, so you don't have to worry about them chewing on their lip because they can't feel it or any trauma. It's very, very important that the stay unit is used for patients with epidermolysis bullosa. It's actually better. Little kids prefer it anyway to standard anesthesia. They never worry about the numb feeling afterwards, okay? It's superior in the, how well it works for anesthesia. So you have every reason to use a stay unit. Lots of good studies on that. Only problem is you get all this technology in there, ultrasonic. We do a lot of stuff with ultrasonics and also lasers. It gets really cluttered. Treatment can be done under general anesthesia, and I'll stop. And the treatment it should be done by a facility that knows what they're doing. Uh, here you see the eyes have been protected with heavy layers of ophthalmic ointment. The nasal tracheal tube is properly placed. Uh, everything, blood pressure cuff is properly protected. I touched the screen again, sorry. Uh, there's a jelly donut here underneath the hand. That's called jelly donuts. Right here, prevent any type of trauma to the fingertips. The IV is placed without tape. So things that we typically follow all the way through. So proper use of endotracheal tubes so we can do treatment. But the most important thing is not doing treatment. 
And many of these patients of mine who have these enamel defects, they end up not needing treatment because we do the proper preventive care. We do the probiotics, we do the MIPase, we do the xylitol, we do everything in our power to keep them from needing to go to the operating room. And so it's just to build strong relationships with your patients. And with that, I want to thank you very much. Last family picture, sorry I went on too long, but there we are. That's middle son in Afghanistan. <laughs> middle son coming back from Afghanistan with my daughter-in-law. The only person, the only time he was ever happier, the happier look on his face was when he saw his dog panty. Very cute. Thank you so much again.